Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching another episode of Time to Football. In today's show, we're going to talk about week eight of the National Football League, talk about some storylines going on in the NFL right now, injury updates, weekly picks, as well as some debates that are going on in the NFL community, including Amari Cooper being traded to the Dallas Cowboys and which other team could be pursuing some top players prior to the trade deadline. Welcome, welcome, everyone, to the Time to Football podcast. We've been getting a lot of new uh, subscribers and faces uh, tuning in every single week, and that's because a lot of our audience is coming from fantasy football videos that we've been uh, posting recently. So for you guys that are a part of that crew, welcome in. Uh, My name is Hassan Khan. I am the wonderful host of this show. So if it is your first time watching... um, for you guys that are watching on YouTube, you probably noticed, whoa, this is like a 30, 40 minute video. What the heck is going on? I'm not going to stay here and watch that. Totally fine. Totally fine. Because this is actually a podcast that we put up on the podcast app and up on iTunes. So for you guys that don't have 30, 40 minutes to just look at your phone straight, you can go to the podcast app, search Time to Football, um, listen to us on the go, listen to us on your way to work. Um, while you're at the gym, just listen in on us talking about every single week in the NFL because the NFL is great. A lot of things are happening right now. Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is part of that trade deadline um, that we're going to be getting into in just a sec. But um, on top of that, in the show, we're going to talk about some other storylines going on in the NFL right now. We're going to give some injury updates for you guys. Like we said, we've been bringing a lot of viewers from those fantasy football videos so those injury updates are important for you guys um as well as give you our weekly picks and um get into some debates and one of the debates that we're going to talk about is which other player is going to be traded because we've already seen carlos hyde get traded to the jacksonville jaguars for a fifth round pick um damon harrison got traded to the Detroit lions from new york snacks has gone from new york um Eli Apple also has been traded from the Big Apple to New Orleans. And just a lot of things are going on right now. So we'll get into all that and talk about what other teams could be pursuing some other players. Uh, But before we get into week eight, we're going to have to recap week seven because it was a good week. This NFL season has been filled with a lot of offensive touchdowns. And we've got three players that we want to highlight on the offense and one defensive player. So we do players of the week on the show every single week. It's not split up like NFC, AFC. No, we, none of that. It's just who we believe are the top performance of the week. So, uh, by the way, do I have a... I feel like I got a booger just like hanging. I don't... I don't know. Possibly. If I do, then deal with it. Um, so, for you guys listening on the podcast app, go to YouTube for a chance to potentially see snot hanging out of my nose. Um... But let's get into the players of the week right now for week seven. And we're going to start off with Kareem the Dream, Kareem Hunt, against Cincinnati in week seven. He had 15 carries, 86 rushing yards, five receptions, 55 receiving yards. He had three total uh, touchdowns. So he had one rushing touchdown and two receiving touchdowns. And he helped the Chiefs beat the uh, Cincinnati Bengals in extreme and great fashion. Our second player of the week is... The return of the Mac, Marlon Mack, 19 carries, 126 rushing yards, as well as two receptions, 33 receiving yards, and he had two total touchdowns against the Buffalo Bills. Uh, one of them was rushing, one of them was receiving, and he beat the Bills, or he helped lead the Colts to a victory, 37-5. to that Colts, that Colts offense is a lot better than people may think. Um, our third player of the week, Emmanuel Sanders. He's been having a solid year. He's the number one wide out right now in Denver. Six receptions, 102 yards, which is great. A receiving touchdown as well. But what really separated him from any, any other wide receiver this week was that he had a passing touchdown. And he helped the Broncos beat the Arizona Cardinals 45-10 to 10, um, in Week 7. So those are our three offensive players of the week. Our defensive player of the week, there's only one man we have to choose. That's the big man, Aaron Donald, the defensive tackle for 
the Los Angeles Rams. Four sacks, nine tackles, one forced fumble, and he led the Rams to a 39-10 victory over the 49ers in Week 7. So those are our Players of the Week. Um, brought to you by Snickers. Um, satisfied or hungry? Grab a Snickers. Just kidding. We don't do uh, advertisements on the show. Nobody sponsors us. Um, but now we're getting into some storylines that are going on uh, ahead of Week 8. One of the major storylines we got to talk about is Le'Veon. So this was a storyline that we talked about last week, but we're going to talk about it again because it still hasn't happened. Le'Veon Bell still hasn't showed up to the Steelers facility. He hasn't reported to the team. It said that he was going to report in week seven during the bye week. Didn't happen. It's week eight. There's no signs of him returning anytime soon. Some people are saying week nine, week 10. And if he reports week nine, he probably won't get a full workload until week 10. Listen, guys, if you've got Le'Veon Bell on your fantasy football team right now, I would just go ahead and trade him. I honestly would. I know that if you're in a position where you have to win every single game from now on to make the playoffs, trade him. You've got nothing to lose. Trade him for probably like a lower end running back, maybe like a Kenyon Drake on top of like a wide receiver, like do do a two for one kind of deal. But it doesn't seem like he's coming back anytime soon. And if he is, how much work is he going to split with James Conner? Um, the second storyline that we're going to talk about, it's what we mentioned prior. It's Amari Cooper has been traded to the Dallas Cowboys in exchange for a first round pick. So we're going to get into later in the podcast if this was a good move for the Cowboys or was it a good move for the Raiders? Who won this trade? We'll get into that in just a bit. But um, as of now, it seems like John Gruden is preparing for the future trading Amari Cooper. Um, We'll get into more of that later on in the podcast. Patrick Peterson. So at first it said that there's been reports that he's been wanting out of Arizona, the all pro cornerback. Then there's reports that saying that Patrick Peterson wants to go to the Saints. Then there's reports saying that Patrick Peterson, Peterson says he prefers to be an Arizona Cardinal. So I don't know what's going on, but there's been rumors that he might be traded by the Cardinals prior to the uh, deadline. Some teams that have talked about him were the New York Jets. It's If he wants to stay an Arizona Cardinal and the Cardinals want to keep him, then fine. But it, it's, it's something to keep an eye out on until the October 30th uh, deadline. And the next storyline that we've got to talk about, Bortle Combat. Blake Bortles will start this week against the Philadelphia Eagles in London, England. Um, That was terrible, but whatever. Um, He will start over Cody Kessler. So he was benched after going 6 for 12 um, last week against the Houston Texans. Didn't complete any touchdowns. It was like 54 passing yards or something like that. And he was benched in favor of Kessler. Doug Marone finally made the decision because his team needed to it needed a spark on offense. And Kessler came in through a touchdown to TJ Yeldon. That's pretty much it. Marone made the decision earlier in the week. Let's start Bortles. Let's give him a chance against the Eagles. Let's see how it goes. Um, and the last storyline, I thought this was pretty interesting. Hugh Jackson is in danger of losing his job. So for a man that went 1-15 in his first year, and then he went 0-16 his second year. They still decided to keep him on because they believed that Hugh Jackson was doing something. He was shifting the culture in Cleveland. And now, with a better record so far, more wins halfway through the season than he had in the last two years combined, there's already talks about him being fired. Maybe it's because... General Manager John Dorsey had a lot of expectations for him, bringing in a lot of uh, players from from trades and from the draft and um, just not getting a lot done with those kind of personnel. I don't know what it is. But regardless, Hugh Jackson is on the hot seat. It's a possibility that Hugh Jackson might be out of Cleveland. So those are your storylines to look forward to prior to week eight. Sponsored by Sprite. Sprite, do the do. Another one of those people that don't sponsor us, as they should. Um, But now we're going to get into some injury updates 
prior to week eight. So for you guys, gosh, I, I want to say, first of all, before we get into that, thank you. Thank you for subscribing to this YouTube channel because for you guys that don't know, a lot of you guys have come in for those fancy football videos, which have been really taken off. We appreciate you guys watching those and asking for advice. Uh, we've gotten close to 600 subscribers, actually over 600 subscribers just from those videos alone in the past month. Um, so for you guys that are tuning into fancy football videos, know that this YouTube channel, it's way more than fancy football. We talk about the NFL in general. So for you guys though, that are tuning in from those fancy football videos, this is probably your favorite part coming up because we're going to give you injury updates prior to week eight. So look out for these guys. These guys might be on your fancy football team. Um, let's start off with, um, Leonard Fournette. So he was on our injury list last week. He has a hamstring injury. He was out for week seven, but now we've got confirmation that Doug Marone doesn't want to start him until week 10. Next up, uh, Josh Allen, a UCL injury. He's still out, um, and it was made, uh, the decision was made earlier in the week that Josh Allen's going to be out for week eight. LaShawn McCoy, so he got a concussion um, after a what seemed like a one-yard gain, and he's in the concussion protocol, So, but keep your eye on him. Uh, for this Monday. Melvin Gordon, a, a hamstring injury, so they didn't want to rush anything. Anthony Lynn saw that, what, what's been going on with Leonard Fournette, with Dalvin Cook, with those hamstring injuries. He said, I'm not going to risk that. So we've got confirmation he's going to play in week nine. It'll be almost close to a whole month that Melvin Gordon has seen live action by the time he plays, so that's enough time for his hamstring injury to heal. Rob Gronkowski, he's had back spasms that he suffered this past Friday. Um, he's day-to-day -day for now. He could play Monday night against the Bills. Regardless, that's something to look out for. Ryan Tannehill, shorter injury, already confirmed. He's out for week eight. Brock Osweiler will start this week. Dalvin Cook, now they're saying that he's going to be out until week 11. So that's a long time for you Dalvin Cook owners on your fantasy football team. Matt Breida, ankle injury. This guy is... He's Superman. He's unstoppable. He's suffered, what, like three injuries this year. And every single injury, he's like, no, I'm not resting. I'm playing. And he's day-to-day -day right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if he plays this Sunday against the Arizona Cardinals. But keep an eye out on Matt Breida. Cooper Cup, MCL. So he was out week seven. The decision was made. Sean McVay this week has said he's unsure. It's hard to say whether he's going to uh, rest for week eight. He's day-to-day. -day. Bilal Powell. This is a, a news that we just learned. Neck injury, he was placed on IR. Um, so it's going to seem like Isaiah Crowell and Trenton Cannon will get the share of carries in New York. So those are your injury updates sponsored by... Um, I don't know. Some medical center. Um, now we're going to get into weekly picks. So... Weekly picks, these weren't determined by us. These were determined by you, the fans. So what we're going to do is, um, or let, let me first preface everything. So weekly picks, every Tuesday, we put polls up on Instagram saying, who do you think is going to win each game? People uh, pick um, who's going to win each game. Then we get those results. We show those results on the show. But also on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and give my input and see if I um, can agree with you guys. Uh, you guys the fans or do I disagree with you guys so let's look ahead at the weekly picks for week eight. First game we got is the Thursday night game the Miami Dolphins versus the Texans you guys are favoring the Texans to win 60% to 40% and I'm going to agree with you on that I think the Houston Texans they're really starting to come alive the offense wasn't looking that good earlier on but now I think they're going to be really moving on the Dolphins defense I picked the Texans to win this game as well Eagles versus Jaguars, 67% are picking the Eagles, 33% the Jaguars. Again, I side with you guys. The Eagles, even though, I mean, technically it's a road game for them, but it's a road game for both of them. Jaguars, their offense has not been looking good. Blake Bortles, he's better than most people think, but still, just a lot of confusion with the Jaguars offense. I like the Eagles. Broncos, Chiefs, this one isn't even close. 81% of you like the Chiefs, only 90% the Broncos. I agree with you guys at Arrowhead Stadium. Got to go with the Kansas City Chiefs. Browns versus Steelers. This is a lot closer. 43% to 57%. 57% of you are, are siding with the Steelers. I do like Pittsburgh in this game. The last uh, the last game that these guys had, it was a tie. 
The Browns really showed up, but I don't think the Browns can really keep up with the Steelers. And I'm picking the Steelers to win this game. So, so far, I agree with you guys. Redskins versus Giants. 55% are picking the Redskins. 45% are picking the Giants. So, if you watch a lot of Redskins games, the Redskins away are different than the Redskins at home. And because of that, because the Redskins are different on uh, during away games, I'm picking the Giants in an upset. I'm going to pick the Giants to win this game. It's the Seahawks versus Lions. 64% are picking the Seahawks. 36% are picking the Detroit Lions. I'm going to agree with that. I'm going to say the Seahawks are going to beat the Lions. Jets versus Bears. 24% the Jets. 76% the Bears. Um, You know what? Let's go with the Bears on that one. The Jets offense, it's hard to trust anyone right there. Bucks versus Bengals. 37% are picking the Bucks. 63% the Bengals. I like the Bengals in this one. That, well, both secondaries aren't that good, but that Bucks defense is not good at all. Um, I'm picking the Bengals in this one. The Ravens versus Panthers. 43% the Ravens, 57% the Panthers. I like the Panthers. Um, I believe they're a top 10 team in the NFL, but so are the Baltimore Ravens. I'm going to pick the Baltimore Ravens. So another game that I don't tie with you guys. I'm picking the Ravens to win um, on the road. Colts versus Raiders. 47% the Colts. 53% the Raiders. This actually surprised me that you guys are picking the Raiders to win. Because I like the Colts. I really like that Colts offense. Raiders defense is not that good. 49ers versus Cardinals. 49% the 49ers. 51% the Cardinals. Again, this is a close one. Even though the majority of you guys are siding with the Cardinals, this is another game that I'm going to go against the grain, and I'm going to pick the 49ers. Um, the Packers versus Rams. Wow, this is actually more lopsided than, than I thought. 30% the Packers, 70% the Rams. The Rams, 7-0, undefeated. Ah, I'm going to have to side with you guys. I really like the Rams. 63% are siding with the Saints to beat the Vikings, 37%. I'm going to go against the grain again. I'm going to pick the Minnesota Vikings to win. And this could be a shootout, which I do believe it is. And I believe that Kirk Cousins is going to keep up with his own, him and his offense, with the New Orleans Saints. And Monday Night Football, the New England Patriots versus the Buffalo Bills, 85%. A whopping 85% are picking the Patriots. And only 15% are picking the Bills. Sadly, I'm going to have to side with you guys. I'm picking the uh, Patriots. Not sadly that I'm siding with you guys. Sadly, I feel for the Bills. Um, they're going to drop and get another loss on their record. So those were your weekly picks. Who should this be sponsored by this week? Can I get sued if I mention this? Kind of, I, You know what? I'll stop. The joke is getting old anyway, so I'll just go ahead and stop. Um... So now we're going to get into some debates that are going on in the NFL right now. Like we mentioned, the trades, and um, we're going to talk about that. Uh, but first, we're going to get into um, another shameless plug, and it's for something that we started, and that is Patreon. So Patreon.com is um, the number one way to sponsor your favorite content creator. So whether it's a videographer, a YouTuber, um, someone that does work on Instagram, on social media, whatever it is, photographer, you can sponsor them if you go to patreon.com and you can pledge a certain amount every single month to help them jumpstart some projects that they've got planned. Um, so for us at Time of Football, it's actually pretty cool. A few of you guys actually signed up for it, so we appreciate you guys. We've been promoting this for the past few months and a few of you guys have actually signed up, so we thank you for that. Um, we offer services along with the pledges that you make. So pledging as low as $1 a month. That's it. $1 takes two minutes. You won't even notice that it's gone from your paycheck. $1 a month will get you an award. So if you guys watch the uh, Fantasy Football web series, uh, if you guys love that, it's hilarious. We have fun making it. Um, you have more access. You can see everybody's roster um, in real time, see every transaction, see all-time stats it's for a dollar it's well worth the price um but if everybody that watched this podcast right now and everybody that listened to this podcast right now on the podcast app just went to patreon.com slash time to football and just gave a dollar a month we would have enough money to grow time to football tremendously um if you're listening on the podcast app 
you can go to the details or the description of this episode and we'll provide the link to the Patreon page directly um, so you can click on that. And also in the description for you guys watching on YouTube, we'll put that link in the description so you guys can click on directly and pledge that way. Um, so patreon.com slash time to football. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash time to football. Every little bit helps. Guys, it's that time. It's time to football, obviously, but it's that time to talk about the debates going on in the NFL right now. Biggest one we're going to talk about, Amari Cooper is now a Dallas Cowboy. He's been traded to the Dallas Cowboys from the Oakland Raiders in exchange for a 2019 first round pick. So the big question is, was this good for the Cowboys or was it better for the Raiders? Let's get into that. First of all, before I talk about that, let us know your thoughts in the comment, uh, in the comment section. Seriously, we would love to hear about it and love to know what you guys think. Amari Cooper, Dallas Cowboy. Um, interesting. I'll say that. Interesting. Let's look at each side of it. Let's start off with the Dallas Cowboys. They need a receiver. Desperately, when your number one receiver is Cole Beasley, that's not a knock on Cole Beasley. He's a talented receiver. You know you've got a problem. Dak Prescott, maybe in the last two weeks, he's been coming to life, but recently he needs a receiver. Um, and Amari Cooper can fill in that role. Um, so they're thinking to themselves, well, here's a team, the Oakland Raiders, that they said that Amari Cooper is up on the trade block and his price is a first round pick. He's 24 years old. He's been to the Pro Bowl two times. He's had 2,000 yard seasons. I mean, it's a no brainer at this point. Let's go ahead and do it. My thing is though, you gave up a first round pick. That could be valuable depending on where you draft. Maybe the Cowboys are rebuilding um, or, or strengthening up this team because I really believe that this year they can go to the Super Bowl and all the power to them. I have nothing but respect for that. But they decided to move on and decided to um, move on with a first round pick, obviously, and uh, go with Amari Cooper as their number one wide receiver. Let's look at the Raiders' perspective. John Gruden, a lot of changes have been made. Ever since he traded Khalil Mack, it seems like he's a lot more fearless from getting rid of his top players. But they said, it's time to to move on from them. We're going to rebuild for the future. They've got three first-round picks. Three first-round picks. Listen, you can say what you want about John Gruden trading away Amari Cooper. But three first-round picks going into Las Vegas? John Gruden, he was hired for 10 years. 10-year, $100 million contract. I guarantee you, He's more so concerned about the future than he is for this year. He, at this point, doesn't expect to go to the Super Bowl. There's no way they're going to the Super Bowl. So who on? Do you go with the Cowboys, who now have a wide receiver, a number one wide receiver, or do you go with the Raiders, who now have three first-round picks? Who won that trade? This is probably the unpopular opinion. But I'm going to say the Oakland Raiders won that trade. After you trade Khalil Mack, at this point, I'm thinking to myself, once you trade Amari Cooper, oh, yeah, sure, do it. The Cowboys are, are, are to, to quote uh, Matthew Cottrell, who's one of our followers on Instagram, he commented when we posted about it. So this is a shout out to him. To quote him, he said, the Raiders won this trade as well. The Cowboys are continuing to do Cowboys things couldn't have put it in a much better way um, than that again the Cowboys got a talented player they've got a 24 year old who's been to two Pro Bowls 2,000 yard seasons but what are you going to do next year You he, he's going to make 14 million dollars 14 million dollars for Amari Cooper I don't know if that's worth it and on top of that on top of that you lose a first round pick your team isn't going to go to the Super Bowl this year. So you lost the chance of rebuilding for next year for 2019. I don't know. I, I, I feel like the Raiders 
did the smartest thing. John Gruden, he has nine more years after this year in his contract. He's preparing for the future. That's really what he's doing. And he knows that this team is not going to the Super Bowl. Three first-round picks. I say Raiders. I say Raiders won the uh, won the trade. But let, definitely let me know what you guys think um, of this trade. Um, speaking of trades, something else that we're going to talk about just in a wide genre or, or in a broader sense is trades in general. Before the October 30th deadline, what other players could be traded? So there's rumors out. We mentioned Patrick Peterson earlier in the show. We mentioned that he might be traded to teams probably like the New Orleans Saints to the New York Jets. Now he's saying that he wants to be an Arizona Cardinal. I think the Saints are out of the question after they traded for Eli Apple. So they got their defensive back help in Eli Apple. No Patrick Peterson in any sense whatsoever. But the Saints don't seem like they're going to pursue Patrick Peterson and and bring him back home because he's from Louisiana. More than likely, Patrick Peterson is staying in Arizona. Other players that could be traded, Demarius Thomas has been a rumor as well. Thomas is actually very outspoken about it to the media. He's not shy from it. He says, listen, I'm not dumb. I'm not dumb. I know that that there's rumors out there that I might be traded, that I'm the odd man out. I know that this team is uh, going with more options, going with Emmanuel Sanders and Cortland Sutton at wide receiver. He knows that this might be his last season in Denver. Another big name, Le'Veon Bell. So I'm 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 gonna talk about the trade rumor. I think it's done. I I I think he's not gonna get traded. Now, if he showed up week seven, absolutely. I don't know if he's gonna show up prior to the trade deadline, and that'll just eliminate his chances of of being traded. That teams want him in the first place. So Le'Veon Bell, that rumor is done. Some quarterbacks start are in question about being traded. Eli Manning. Um has been brought up in rumors, especially with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Tom Coughlin is in the front office. As we all know, he's had a history with Eli Manning. And uh, it's rumored that he he would love to bring um, Eli Manning in. I don't know. Um, That's also another uh, rumor that I don't think is going to come true at all. Um, Tyrod Taylor. I'm sorry, Tyrod Taylor. Uh of the Cleveland Browns after he got benched by uh, Hugh Jackson in favor of Baker Mayfield. He's also another quarterback that might be on the trade market and other teams like the Jaguars might be in pursuit of him. That's something to keep your eye on. Um, But it's reported that the Jaguars are fully confident in the quarterbacks that they have right now in Blake Bortles and Cody Kessler. So that doesn't seem like it's going to happen. And the last player I really want to talk about, Nick Foles is another player to watch ahead of the trade deadline. Um, it, it's it's tough nowadays to be a backup quarterback because every team th- so far this year, I'm not going to say that every team so far has a good quarterback, but they have a quarterback that they are either, that's either good enough to be the starter or a work in progress. So Patrick Peterson, Le'Veon Bell, Demarius Thomas, Nick Foles, Eli Manning, and Terod Taylor are the uh, six players that we had in mind prior to the October 30th trade deadline. More than likely than not, probably none of those players are going to be traded, but you you never know. Um, So just keep an eye out for those players um, ahead of the trade deadline. Now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, fan questions. These are questions that you guys have submitted through us through Instagram. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, go to Instagram.com. Um, search for us uh, on the Instagram app. Search Time to Football. You'll find us. Follow us on there. And we like to be very interactive with you through our uh, Instagram stories. So these were submitted through Instagram. I have not had a chance to read any of these. These are all authentic. So you're going to see real, authentic, genuine answers coming out of me. So... If you guys are trolls, so be it. I'll read them off, possibly. Um, If you just want a shout out, because if you answer, like if you say, "Can I please get a shout out?" I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not going to shout you out. Like, ask me questions. What do you want to know? Um. All right. So let's get into it. What do we got here? 
Um, what about the Cowboys? Sheesh. Well, that's not a question, but uh, this is from Yo Yo Boy Julian. Golly, guys. Yo Boy Julian Cito. What kind? I don't. These names, bro. But he says, what What about the Cowboys? Sheesh. Well, that's a statement. But to go off of that, yeah, sheesh. Like I said, I believe the Raiders won that. I believe at this point they're not going to make the Super Bowl. If they possibly were going to make the Super Bowl, then don't trade Amari Cooper. But you're not going to. So build for the future. Amari Cooper's talented. He's too inconsistent, though. That's the thing. Um, so Cowboys... This only helps them this year. In the future, not so much. But this year, at least they have a number one wide out. Um, next question. Who are the best wide receivers in the league? Top five. This is from Fox Katarini Chia. Um, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, Fox. Um, five best wide receivers in the league. When I say best wide receivers, this is, ex- I mean, well, it's taken this year into consideration, but I like to base it off of talent and like the eye test and who is the most physically gifted, talented, makes the best plays, athletic ability, whatever. Um, and the best receiver in the league, it's Antonio Brown. So that's my number one. Antonio Brown, he can do it all. Um, the only thing that he's lacking is size, but that he makes up for it with his speed, with his route running. He, he's just a target monster. He's always open. Antonio Brown, regardless of what kind of statistical season he's having, he's always going to be the best wide receiver in the league. Oh, so far, he's holds on to the top spot. I know a lot of people, first of all, when I go further in my list, I'm going to say this. Like I said, I go off of the eye test. Okay, I'm not going off of statistically who's having the best year. I know Adam Thielen's having the best year. And does that help does that help his ranking and the top wide receivers in the NFL? Yes it does. Yes it does, but true talent wise this is all I'm basing it off of. It's Antonio Brown. So don't base it off of this year alone. Base it off of probably the last 2 or 3 years and like physically, how are they? All right, so number two, I've got Julio Jones as the number two best wide receiver in the NFL. Again, you could say he's not going to score a lot of touchdowns, but it's physically, he's probably one of the best receivers in the NFL, if not the best receiver. Gets it done every single game, um, and he's a game changer on the field. So whether he's making catches or he's not, he's bringing a lot of attention away from defensive backs so that other players can make plays. Um, Julio Jones is my number two. Number three, this is probably going to surprise you uh, a little bit, but I actually have DeAndre Hopkins as my number three receiver. He is the greatest sideline receiver in the NFL right now, making the best catches along the sideline. Um, Leave a comment, definitely debate with me if you think otherwise, but definitely the best sideline receiver in the NFL right now, makes great catches. See that catch that he made against... Jalen Ramsey, one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL, gets it done every single week. DeAndre Hopkins um, is my number three. Number four, um, you know, this is going to be tough, but I'm going to go with Odell. I'm going to go with Odell. Odell Beckham is my number four, even though the Giants offense isn't as good as we hope they would be this year. Um, he still gets it done. He still puts up yards, still puts up touchdowns, um, regardless of the condition of the offense. Um, because of that, I got him at number four. Number five, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas, he's he's put himself in the top five. Um, or, you know, I, in the past, would have maybe put, like, A.J. Green in there. Um, but Michael Thomas, after this year, he's, he's going to get over 100 receptions. He's gotten what 90 receptions in each of his first two years in the nfl um michael thomas is probably number five in in regards to the best uh wide receiver uh in the nfl so that's my top five antonio brown julio jones odell beckham i'm i'm sorry deandre hopkins odell beckham michael thomas and honorable mentions 
probably AJ Green, Mike Evans, even though a lot of people knack on him. Um, Devontae Adams is up there as well. Um, I guess I'll give you my top 10. This isn't any order. Um, who else is up there? T.Y. Hilton is up there. Doug Baldwin is also up there. Um, Adam Thielen as well um, is putting him that himself in that category now. Uh, man, there's just a lot. There really is a lot. But top five, Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, um, DeAndre Hopkins, Odell, and Michael Thomas. Um, some other questions. Can I please get a shout out? No, no, you can't. Um, how to become a great linebacker by Hamo Boy with a with a zero instead of a an O. That's I'm not a I'm not a coach. I can't. I don't know. This is like ask questions about the NFL, but how to become a great linebacker? I don't. I don't ask ask your football coach. I see in your little avatar you play football. Ask your coach, man. Ask him. What gear do I need to play football? I don't know. A, a cup? I don't... Why... Don't ask me these... Ask me about the NFL. I don't know any of this. You need pads. You need a helmet. Just figure it out yourself. But I'm... This is... Don't don't ask me those questions. And this other one, it's another one of these things. I'm a junior in high school right now. How do I get myself out there for college coaches to see? I don't know, man. Play well. Ask me questions about the NFL, but don't ask me these kind of questions. Seriously, I'm not gonna, not gonna answer them. All right, well that just uh, that ruined the mood. So I guess I'm done with fan questions at this point. So you know, um, oh, also another thing is fantasy football. A lot of people were talking about fantasy football. They're saying like, why don't you bring? Fancy football on this show. Um, you used to have it. You don't have it on anymore. For you guys listening to us on iTunes, that's totally understandable. But uh, for you guys that watch on YouTube, know that we do make those fancy football videos, those must starts, must sits videos. So that's what we've been straying away from because we make a whole video based off of fancy football alone. So if you're interested in fancy football advice, go watch that um, up on YouTube. So for you guys listening on the podcast app, Seriously, that's another perk of going to YouTube and subscribing because we have much more content out on there than just this one podcast a week. We have about two or three videos a week. Um, so if you want fantasy football advice, go watch those um, or watch that video up on YouTube and uh, we'll give you the best fantasy football advice. You can ask us a question in the comment section. We'll answer it. Uh, but that's it. That's it for the uh, Time to Football podcast. We appreciate you guys joining in um and likewise you know like we said podcast app go to youtube youtube go to the podcast app but regardless go to instagram go to time to football search time to football all one word the number two instead of uh, the word two and follow us on there because we like to be very interactive we like to get your thoughts like you to comment like you to vote in our weekly polls that we show up Look, like for you to guys to ask us questions, not like advice questions about your football career, but advice, but like questions about the NFL that we can answer on the show. Um, go to patreon.com slash time football, support us on there. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Take care. <laughs>